Have you ever wanted to weather stuff on your model railroad, but you had no idea where to start? I've got something to get you on the rails, coming up on JC's Rip Track. Hi there, my name is John and welcome to JC's Rip Track. If this is your first time here and you're looking for tricks and tips on how to transform your models from a piece of plastic to something that looks like you'd find it on the railroad today, please click on subscribe and that little bell icon down below so you can be updated whenever I upload a new video. Before we get into it, if you've done your own weathering and have a good process that you like to use, please let me know in the comment section down below. Weathering stuff on your model railroad, whether it is rolling stock, locomotives, buildings or anything else, can be pretty intimidating. First, you may not want to spoil the pristine factory paint job and reduce its possible resale value. Second, you may not even know where to start. And third, maybe you've tried it and the pastels and chalks have just left your models looking dirty and so you've been frustrated. Well, this channel is dedicated to taking some of the mystique out of both painting and weathering. And really, we all have to start somewhere. I've built and painted models across several different genres and I've learned a lot of tricks and techniques along the way. And so I hope to share them with you in this channel. The process that I'm using today assumes a few things. One, you are starting with a factory painted model. I'm gonna get into painting undecorated models in a later video, but today I'm assuming that you have an out of the box, clean factory paint job. I'm also assuming that if you wanted to re-letter or renumber it, you've already done so. And if you wanna learn how to do that, that will come in a later video. Now also, I am not getting into specific techniques. Each point in this video has a number of different ways to get at it, and I'll be covering those in future videos. For example, there are a number of different ways to chip the paint on your models, and each, of course, deserves its own video. Number three, this is also a baseline. There's lots of room for variation and improvisation as you get more comfortable with it. So you've got a model that is just screaming to look more than just being a hunk of plastic on the table. Before reaching for the pastels and the weathering chalks, we've got some work to do first. Oh, and for the moment, just keep those pastels and weathering chalks on the shelf. Remember, we get into techniques in later videos. So here goes. Step number one. Research the prototype. A good way to get started in weathering is to look for real life examples of the piece in question. In particular, check out places on the internet like Railroad Picture Archives or railpictures.net or do a general Google search of the road number of the model that you have. Even if you don't find the exact road numbers match, you can still find locomotives or other pieces of rolling stock that will help you see the patterns in weathering. Now, don't feel that you have to replicate the prototype. I have and do, but it's your model. And really? You can do whatever you want with it. Also, weathering tends to evolve over time. Generally, the newer the picture, the more weathering that you're going to see in it. However, rolling stock and locomotives do get a new paint job from time to time. Once you've done this, now you can get to work on your model. I will be talking about tools and paints and how to use them in later videos. Remember, this is about process, not technique, yet. Step two in this process is preparing your model. This can be removing the trucks and wheel sets from rolling stock, for locomotives, you should remove the shell and carefully disassembling it into the larger chunks like walkways, cabs, and the main body. Locomotives can be a little bit more fiddly, but the principle is still the same. You may want to clean the model as well, depending upon how many fingerprints it may have accumulated. And while this falls more into technique than process, I usually make a point of doing a clear coat between each step, whether it is clear or gloss, depending upon what I'm going to be doing next. It helps protect the work that you've just done and helps set up for the next step. Step number three, fading. Now we are getting down to weathering. Fading is what happens to paint on large objects when exposed to sun and blown dust over time. The sun's UV rays fade the color of the paint while the blown dust can abrasively wear it away. This can be done with a variety of techniques, but the main idea is to make the paint and the markings look worn rather than factory fresh. Step four, pin or detail washes. If you've ever looked at a full-size rail car, you'll notice that the panel lines and details are much more distinctive because of shadows, accumulated dirt, or the very depth of a panel or door. The first major step is to use carefully applied washes to make these details pop out, giving the illusion of volume. Step five, 
chipping. Remember that rail cars and locomotives are in constant use moving goods from point A to point B. Workers climb all over them to load and unload them or to make sure they're in good working order. As good as the paint can be, no paint job can withstand daily abrasive contact over years and years of continuous use. The older the car or locomotive, the more likely there are going to be places where the paint has chipped away. There are several techniques, but they fall into two major categories. The first being additive, in that paint is added to the model to simulate chipping. The second is subtractive, where paint is removed to display the color that is underneath. Most of the time, additive techniques are what you're going to be using on a factory painted model. Step six, rust and rust streaks. Rust tends to go hand in hand with chipping. Exposed metal from chips oxidizes, giving way to rust. However, rust comes in a variety of forms and there are numerous techniques on how to handle it. Regardless of how one applies rust, it should be done after chipping. Step seven, graffiti and patches. Like it or hate it, graffiti is a reality of modern railroading. Graffiti writers see these enormous rolling canvases as opportunities to display their art or simply scribble a tag. On the other hand, rail workers are often tasked with either painting over graffiti in its entirety or, if they're short on paint, painting over enough so that the important road and data markings can be reapplied. Graffiti can be applied either by pre-made decals or if you're wanting a real challenge, hand painting it yourself. And step eight, dirt, dust, grease, and fuel stains. Lastly, no locomotive or rail car stays clean for long. Dirt and dust quickly build up as trains move through their environment. This step is the least reliant on prototype photos as the appearance of dust and dirt changes after each rainstorm or dust devil. Similarly, grease and fuel stains often come out over the dust as a recent fueling or where a bearing has been oiled. And sometimes it even just soaks right into the dirt itself. So again, here's the process in a quick list. Number one, research the prototype. Two, prepare your model. Three, fading. Four, pin or detail washes. Five, chipping. Six, rust and streaking. Seven, graffiti and patches. And eight, dirt, dust, grease and fuel stains. Oh, and just as a reminder, it's a good idea to do a clear coat of some kind between each step. And there you have it, a basic process for weathering your cars. Regardless of the techniques that you choose to use at each step, this order can help you get the most out of your weathering projects. If you're interested in ideas and other techniques to use, check out my other videos. If you want more tips on how to get the most out of your painting and weathering projects, don't forget to hit subscribe and that little bell icon. In future videos, I will be getting into the details of each and every step, as well as giving a different techniques in different videos. Thank you so much for watching, good luck, and may you keep on track.